this, I am joined right now by Laredo, Texas Mayor Pete Sines. Thank you so much uh, for being with us this morning. I know you're mayor of this border town where you have an up-close and personal look at what's happening uh, along the southern border. Can you tell us what it's like? Yes, I thank you for the invitation. Um, yes, I'm uh, the mayor of Laredo, Texas, the number one land port of the Americas. Uh, so uh, almost uh, 16, 17,000 trucks uh, traverse our bridges daily, uh, both ways. Yeah, as far as uh, the uh, safety inspections by our governor, uh, you know, he's definitely uh, caught our attention. <laughs> so uh, as of yesterday, uh, the governor of Nuevo Leon uh, in Mexico and Governor Abbott spoke and apparently Governor Abbott decided to, uh, to pull back on these uh, safety inspections uh, for the time being, based on the assurances that the Nuevo Leon governor gave uh, Governor Abbott that uh, you know, he could assure him that no drugs, uh, no illegal drugs, nor human contraband would be on the trucks that were you know, coming into the U.S. But, but aside from that, all the other ports are being impacted, and, and obviously that's a concern for us. Uh, uh, Texas is the number one uh, trading partner for Mexico, vice versa. Uh, and uh, and yeah, any impact, any slowdown, delays at the bridges is definitely a slowdown on the economy. Uh, we understand border security is very important uh, for us. Uh, and I would venture to say that all of uh, the uh, southwestern border, well, uh, yeah, at least that pertains to Texas, we, we want Title 42 to remain. Um, we're hoping that with this uh, situation with the governor, it's brought, brought more attention to it. And we're asking Washington to please uh, reconsider and, and keep Title 42 for the time being uh, because we don't want any more uh, you know, influxes of, of migrants that coming through our borders and creating issues. Uh, so, so you actually are in favor of maintaining Title 42? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, at least our region here, uh, we're in favor of maintaining Title 42. And, uh, and uh, hopefully at the next go around, I know uh, there were 55 votes in the Senate. Uh, they lack five votes uh, for the 60 votes uh, for it to be approved, but, but maybe at the next go around, they can incorporate some other features or themes uh, dealing with, with, uh, with immigration that may attract more uh, Democratic senators uh, to vote for it. Uh, but we think it's, it's, uh, it has, we need some protection, some uh, defense mechanism here to uh, repel or deter uh, the uh, the migrant surges that are predicted to come uh, come May 23rd. So there's time, I would think, uh, for Title 42 to uh, to be kept uh, in place uh, until something more permanent uh, can be uh, brought forward by by Congress. But of course, that's been lagging for years and years, uh, and we definitely need something uh, in immigration reform uh, to to occur uh, to to hopefully get the asylum laws under some sort of order and also the immigration system that we have that, that really needs a lot of attention. Governor Abbott has actually begun dispatching buses to take immigrants who voluntarily will go to Washington, D.C. to maybe get lawmakers and the president's attention. What are your thoughts about that? Well, that's it's all voluntary, as, uh, and I'm sure there are some migrants that are willing to go to Washington, D.C. or the northeast uh, part of our nation, uh, and that's really between them and, and, the, and the governor and and where they want to go. Uh, yeah, from our standpoint, uh, we do have a system here that we we use uh, uh, NGOs, uh, and apparently it's working fine. Uh, but with a surge, who knows? Uh, so you know, we need to consider Plan A and Plan B, and be ready for Plan B if, if Plan A uh, gets bogged down some way somehow. Uh, can, can, so, we just, can we just uh, say the numbers of people? Because I think for a lot of folks watching at home, they know that there are more immigrants crossing the southern border. But how many more people do you believe will cross into the U.S. if Title 42 is revoked? Well, we've been hearing reports, and, uh, and we stay very close to the Border Patrol people. Uh, yeah, they're claiming that approximately 18,000 uh, per day w would be traversing or crossing uh, yeah, into the U.S. illegally. Uh, and, and, and the majority of these folks, uh, at least in this region here, uh, cross uh, evading Border Patrol. Uh, some do cross, and of course, they, they hand themselves over to Border Patrol for asylum purposes. But some folks don't, and, and those are the folks that worry us. Uh, our concern here are once they cross, uh, there's a system of stash houses where they actually 
these these gangs uh, that are connected to the uh, cartels in Mexico uh, uh, are also somewhat organized here. Uh, luckily, we we have uh, law enforcement that cooperates with each other here that we can contain that. But yet it occurs, and, and they in turn put put uh, these migrants into uh, trucks. Once uh, the trucks cross in, you know, into the U.S. and then they board these trucks and they go north, or they put them in trains, uh, and that that's something that we see here in this region more so than the asylum seekers. But uh, but irrespective, uh, you know, the uh, you know the laws of our of the border, the immigration and asylum laws need to be corrected or at least improved. Mayor Sines, thank you so much uh, for joining us and giving perspective on this very important story. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the invite. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.